So obviously our readings today are, we're getting that bit, that bit closer to Christmas, so the theme of our readings is obviously miraculous conceptions from uh, Samson and now John the Baptist. <clears throat> and often when we read these stories, and maybe this is just my uh, practical mind, but when we read these stories, I think it can be a danger to think that these were stories that were told back in the day, back 2,000 years ago, about miraculous conceptions. But at the end of the day, those kind of things don't really happen anymore, or it happened to maybe three or four people in the history of the world. So therefore, it's a nice little story, but it's got really nothing to do with me at all. Firstly, I'm a man, so there ain't going to be no miraculous conception here. Uh, just, you know, just the, the danger is that, that these stories just become stories of, of the Bible rather than God's word to me today. <clears throat> so I was thinking, as I was reading the, the, the readings there this morning, I was thinking, how, how is this relevant to me today? And I thought of a friend of mine who works in Dublin. Uh, she works as a missionary uh, with, uh, in, in, in a certain university, which shall remain nameless, uh, and she's a focus missionary. And she works away there with, so f focus is the fellowship of Catholic university students, for those who aren't aware of what they do. So they're, they're like a mission team on a college campus, and their goal uh, is one of the loftiest and most difficult, which is to win university students back to the Lord through their own relationship with the Lord, their own divine intimacy, then investing in, uh, very deliberately uh, in, in a small number of people. Their job isn't to convert the world. Their job is to bring <clears throat> whatever souls the Lord entrusts to them back to him. Three, four, five, who knows. And then equip them, form them, so that they can be missionaries in turn. <clears throat> so this one friend of mine was talking to a university student. Uh, and uh, they just got talking about different things. And then she asked her, you know, what, what are you... So the missionary asked the other lady, what are you passionate about? And she said a few things that she was passionate about, you know, uh, um, whatever it was, racquetball and stuff. And she said, yeah, yeah. And I was kind of quite passionately anti-Catholic as well, says this girl. You know, I was quite passionately anti-Catholic. But I like you, right? And it was just really interesting, like, the, the phrasing is really interesting, like, I'm, I'm, I'm against kind of, you know, Catholicism or the, the church or whatever, but you're Catholic and you're fairly solidly Catholic, but I like you, all right? And what does this have to do with the gospel? <clears throat> On a daily basis in our church, we see miracles. On a daily basis in our church, we see miracles. Later on this afternoon, we're going to have confessions here, where souls are going to be wiped clean of sin. At every Holy Mass, we have a miracle called transubstantiation, where our gifts uh, of bread and wine turn into Jesus' body and blood. Daily miracle. Um, this afternoon, I will be baptizing my niece. Uh, so all stain of original sin will be removed <clears throat> from her soul forever. You know, that, that indelible mark, forever. Like, it's, her soul will be changed for all time. Uh, so there, there are daily miracles. We can be more fascinated with some of the more spectacular miracles, you know, levitations or maybe exorcisms or whatever, those kind of things will draw our healings, physical healings uh, will draw our attention, maybe they'll get more notoriety. But to be honest, are they greater miracles just because they're more visible? Not really, not necessarily. If through us <clears throat> the seed of faith is sown in a heart, if through our word the Lord can be born in someone else's heart. That is a miracle. So if through my work, through your work, through your word, through your example, Jesus can be born in the heart of another person, Jesus can, can begin to grow within them, illuminate their conscience, then as such, even after you've moved on or they've moved on, uh, the, the presence of the Lord within them, that light emanating from them begins to, to form them. You know, they begin to recognize genie. You know, I used to do these things, but uh, probably shouldn't be doing that kind of thing anymore, should I? And you haven't, you, you didn't sit them down and scold them or anything, but just the presence of Jesus within them illuminates their own conscience that they recognize that kind of behavior. It's just, it's just not good. It doesn't make me happy. It doesn't fulfill me. And I think before God, I don't think it's right either. And, and little by little, that, that light, that presence of Jesus within them starts to, 
starts to draw them back, so it tries to, starts to steer them back onto the right track. So these kind of miraculous conceptions, they're not something of the of yesteryear and centuries gone by. Jesus can be born in every and any heart today through the work of a missionary, through the work of an angel who comes and speaks to them. That angel might be you. And when we witness to our faith and do so with joy and do so with love, Jesus can be born there. And that, my friends, that, that is a miracle. That is a miracle. Imagine, like, just imagine when we get into the, the help of God, we get through the pearly gates, and uh, we meet people there who got there because of our work or our sacrifice or our example or one or two of those conversations that we felt we just completely ruined, completely failed to have a compelling or com convincing argument. And you just kind of walk away going, oh, why didn't I do my homework? Or why didn't I listen more in, universe, in seminary? Or, uh, you know, you, just, you feel like you just, you just didn't answer it like you should have, you know? But what the other person actually heard or saw was that you cared. And you actually cared about them enough to tell them a difficult truth, but with great tact and with great love, but difficult nonetheless. And maybe because of that, long after he parted company, that seed of faith, that relationship with the Lord started to bear fruit in them. And then due to that, they open their hearts to God, go to confession, who knows what after that, and decide that they want heaven. Imagine meeting like in, in heaven, when we, when we will know and see the value of each soul around us, when we will know and see, to some degree anyway, of the love of God for each person, what he's willing to do for them to get them into heaven, and that we in some way participated, helped the Lord, served the Lord in some way as a missionary to help get those souls into heaven. Like, the, the joy, the, 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 I think the absolute humility we would have before the Lord to say, Lord, thank you that... I could have had this privilege of in some way serving you to, to win souls for you. My goodness, like what, what a joy, what a joy, what a privilege. When we're here, it can be a wee bit of a sacrifice at times because we don't win all the battles. We don't win all the time. Not every missionary effort works. Not every conversation is a success. But when it does work, when it does bear fruit, and when the Lord is born in a heart, we may have soul saved a soul for all eternity. So we ask the good Lord today to help us to be like the Archangel Gabriel, bringing these messages of hope <laughs> that Jesus may be born in many, many hearts that many people through our example, our prayer, our self-sacrifice might return to him and discover the true joy of following him. My lips are filled with your praise, with your glory all the day long. Amen.